Let's look at photoperiodism, or a fancy way of saying how to control flowering in plants. So how, how do plants know when to flower, and how come certain types of flowers only flower in the summertime, and some only come out in the spring or the autumn? Uh, no wonder why most of them don't come out in the winter. It's a little bit too cold. Enzymes probably aren't going to be working at their optimal levels when it's really cold outside. Okay. How flowering is controlled, we're going to separate this out a little bit. So let's start over here on the left. Some plants need a minimum number of hours of darkness to flower. What that means is to make them flower, you want to make sure that there's enough darkness. So really, it's the darkness that's important. But the way that we label this is uh, actually called long day and short day plants. So a short day plant actually means a long night. And long night is good because a long night will guarantee that minimum number of hours of darkness. And so these short day plants tend to flower during spring and autumn when you have relatively shorter days compared to the summertime. And then some examples are coffee and strawberry. On the other hand, uh, some plants have a maximum number of hours of darkness that they can have. So they, we need to keep the hours of darkness to uh, a limit. If, it goes, if there's too much darkness, then these plants will not actually flower. And so these plants are called long day plants, but long day plant actually means short night plant. So we need short nights for these particular plants. And that's why they flower during the summer, because the summer has longer days, longer daytime, and really relatively short nights. And carnations and clovers are an example here. Now we're gonna jump into the mechanism of how this actually works. And then some plants are day neutral, so they're not really uh, waiting for a particular season or a certain period of darkness to come along. So we call this photoperiodicity. Now, before we move on, um, although both long day plants and short day plants use the same molecule, this molecule operates in a very different way. So don't get confused. It's going to be the same molecule, but in one case, the molecule is actually going to be a promoter of flowering. And in the other case, it's actually going to be an inhibitor of flowering. So you have to consider these mechanisms separately. So um, a little bit about what we're talking about here. So photoperiodicity, periodicity, that's easy to understand, period. It's just something about um, time and light. So light and time are affecting uh, the plant, basically. <clears throat> Many plants use a protein photoreceptor called phytochrome. Other photoreceptor pigments we've heard about are like chlorophyll and carotene and xanthophyll and fucoxanthins. In this case here, this phytochrome pigment is sensitive to light, but it's not contributing to photosynthesis. So this phytochrome actually comes in <clears throat> two different forms, um, PR and PFR. R stands for red light and FR stands for far red light. So uh, it actually can get converted into the two forms depending on how much light is present. So let's take a look at this really quick. So PR, during the daytime, red light, red light is the part of the visible spectrum which corresponds to some of the red light that, we'd, that would be within sunlight, basically. And far red light is referring to infrared light, so it's kind of the wavelength that you'd get at nighttime or in the absence of daylight. So here's what happens. This PR form, in the presence of daylight, just think about daylight for now. Forget about red and far red. PR in daylight gets converted into this form called PFR. In the absence of light or during nighttime, the PFR gets slowly converted back into PR. Now the important one here is PFR for both long day plants and short day plants. So this guy gets a star, okay? So we're gonna focus on PFR. So it exists, uh, this phytochrome exists in two forms, PR and PFR. Notice the clever coloring here, a brighter red and a darker <clears throat> maroon type red. Thank you very much. Plants are sensitive to the amount of PFR. I mentioned that this one gets the star and here we go. Before you read this, let's try to explain what's happening here. Okay, let's, we're going to consider long day plants first. In long day plants, PFR is required for flowering. And remember I told you the mechanism is different for short day plants. So let's just stick with long day plants for now. In long day plants, once again, PFR is required for flowering. So let's imagine what's happening here. 
So in a long day, so here we have we have some PR that's present in the plant here. And after a long day, so summertime, lots of light, lots of light, it all gets converted into PFR. And we need P PFR for flowering. Now during the short night, the short night, PFR is converting back to PR, but there's not enough darkness. And actually at the end of the night, because a lot of this stuff, most of this stuff got converted to PFR, at the end of the night, there's still PFR left over. And if that PFR is left over, then it's going to bind the genes and then start the transcription of these genes, which is going to start flowering. So these are flowering specific genes. So the key is for long day plants, there's enough PFR left at the end of the night because it didn't all get converted back to PR. If it was a very long night, then the PFR would all get converted back to PR. There's no PFR left and nothing can bind and initiate transcription. So in long day plants, it's PFR that is required for flowering. Okay. In short day plants, PFR is still the important player here, but PFR in short day plants actually acts as an inhibitor of flower growth. So in short day plants, you don't want any PFR left over if you want to be able to flower and it's your time of the year. Okay. So in short day plants, let's visit this. So here we go. Uh, it starts off as PR, then you have some sunlight. It's a shorter day, so the sun's going to rise a little bit later and set a little bit earlier. But the PR, some of the PR gets converted into PFR. Now, PFR is an inhibitor in this case, but that's okay because during this long night, all of this PFR is going to be converted back to PR, or very little of it will be left. So any of the PFR that you made during the daytime if the nighttime is a really long, super duper long, then this PFR will all be converted back to PR and it won't, none of it will be left over. That's good for short day plants because if it's there, if PFR is left over, then it's going to inhibit the growth of flowers. So we want all the PFR to actually be converted back to PR. Hopefully that made sense. This is a very small part of the syllabus, but this is one of the most confusing things uh, that I've seen students come across. So hopefully that made some sense to you. Don't think about it in terms of, you should equate daylight with red and nighttime with far red and then PR, PFR. Remember that PFR is the active form and it either acts as a promoter in long day plants for flowering or an inhibitor in short day plants of flowering. All right, good luck.